if you can solve this equation, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through the solution process step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. Also, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so here is the deal. Now, this particular problem is gonna require more than a few steps. So in order to do this problem, you need to already know how to do a couple other kind of basic level algebra problems. So let me just kind of go over here. There's a quick uh, review. So here are some uh, things that you already know, uh, should already know how to solve. So if I gave you some equations like this, all right, these are some basic equations, really what we call one-step equations. You should be able to solve these things. You're like, oh, 2y is equal to 10. How do I solve for y? Just uh, divide both sides of the equation by 2. So y here would be equal to 5. Here I have y minus 6 is equal to 5. How do I solve for y? Well, here I would have to add 6 to both sides of the equation. So here y would be equal to 11. Now, these are one-step equations. Then you need to kind of go into two-step equations, things like this, 2x minus 1 is equal to 9, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully you are strong with these one- and two-step equations. These are kind of like prerequisite skills that you need to know in order to do this problem. Another thing you're going to need to know is how to deal with the distributor property. So if you have something like, uh, let's say, 2 times 4x plus 1, is equal to 9, well, you need to understand that you need to take this 2 and multiply by these inner terms, all right? So that would be 2 times 4x, so that would be 8x, and then 2 times this 1 would be 2, so that's equal to 9, and then, of course, you would be off to the races to solve this two-step equation. So um, hopefully, you know, this is all making sense to you. Now, because if uh, this doesn't make sense to you, then you know, this uh, problem what I'm going to go through is going to be kind of confusing. So anytime you're trying to learn equations, you need to kind of build up those foundation, foundational skills, fractions, positive, negative numbers, all that kind of good stuff. And then you have to start learning about the distributive property, one step, two step equations, et cetera, et cetera. But when we're dealing with linear equations, uh, based, you know, basic kind of equations that we're dealing with here, uh, things where the variable is to the first power, Basically, what we want to do is get all our variable terms to the left-hand side of the equation and all of our numbers to the right, okay? So, for example, if I had 2x minus 7 is equal to 9x plus 3, well, if you look here, my variable terms are things like 2x. So this 9x is on the wrong side. I want to move that to the left-hand side, and then I want all my numbers to the right. So 3 is okay, but I would want to move this negative 7 over to the right. So kind of just some basic um, concepts, and there's other ones that we need to know in order to do this equation. So I'm going to kind of get into the process, equation-solving process right now. So if you're lost with anything, just make some notes and uh, correct or learn what you need to learn. All right, so first things first, I um, have this uh, parentheses where I have a sum or a difference. So anytime in algebra you have parentheses, with a number, it could be a decimal, a fraction, a whole number, it doesn't make a difference. Outside of a uh, set of parentheses here where there's a sum, i.e. plus or minus going on, and there's some uh, algebra terms like 6x or y or whatnot, this is a, a situation where you need to apply the distributive property, and that's almost always the first thing you need to do is to apply the distributive property before we can start seeing the terms. So in other words, we're going to take this 3 halves, and you can kind of see I already did the work here, and we're going to multiply it by 6 or 6x, and then we're going to take that 3 halves and multiply it by 1 third. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, see the results of that. So when we take this uh, 3 halves and we multiply it by 6, you're going to have 3 halves times 6 or 6 over 1, because we want to think of this as a fraction. Uh, and, of course, that would be uh, the number in front of the x or the coefficient in front of the x variable. And then we have three halves, uh, three halves times uh, one third. You can see this math right here. So let's go ahead and simplify this right now. And you want to show your work just like I'm uh, showing it like right here. You don't want to just do this stuff mentally. You want to show your teacher and yourself that you know what you're doing. All right. So here I have three halves times six over one. A couple of different ways you can think about this. Remember, when you're multiplying fractions, multiply 
the respective numerators and denominators. So three times six is 18, 18 divided by two is nine or nine X. Another way you could have done this is go, oh, two uh, goes into six three times. So th uh, three times three is nine. Either way, as long as you got a nine X, that's what counts. Okay, so here um, I have three halves times one third. So it's gonna be three times one is three over two times three is six. Uh, so three over six is one half. Um, of course, you could have done this, uh, cross cancel these like factors here, three and three, and I'm gonna left you with one half. So we have nine X plus one half is equal to two fifths. All right, so we're looking uh, pretty good here. I have all my variable terms on the left, so I don't have to move any variable terms here, but I do need to move this number over to the right hand side. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about how to do that right now. Okay, so what we wanna do is subtract one half from both sides of the equation. Now this is a real important principle in algebra. And basically you can do anything to an equation as long as you do it equally to both sides of the equation. So if I'm like, I got this positive one half over here, I wanna get rid of it on this side of the equation. So how can I get rid of a positive one half? Easy, just subtract a one half from it, right? Because positive one half minus one half is zero. So I wanna get rid of a, a number, just do the opposite operation, in this case from addition, that would be subtraction. But if I'm gonna subtract one half of uh, one half from this side of the equation, I have to do it equally on this side as well. Okay, so that is the main, one of the uh, core concepts of solving equations in algebra. So but by doing this, I'll remove the number on the left-hand side and I'll get that number on the right-hand side. So now we kinda wanna add down in a column manner. So 9x plus nothing is simply going to be a 9x. And then a positive one half minus one half is zero. I don't need to write a zero there. It just kind of disappears. So I have uh, only nine X now on the left-hand side. And so now I have two fifths minus one half or two plus, uh, plus sorry, two fifths plus a negative one half or two fifths minus one half. So we'll just uh, write that like this for the time being, okay? Because we're gonna have to do a little bit of work to uh, simplify this fraction situation, right? We're gonna subtract these two fractions, two fifths minus uh, two over five minus one half or two fifths minus one half. So we're going to have to find the lowest common denominator, right? So at this point, you need to know something about adding and subtracting fractions. You cannot add or subtract fractions unless these lovely numbers down here called the denominators are the same. In this case, these are not the same, but we could find a common denominator. Matter of fact, we could find the lowest common denominator. And uh, this particular case, it's going to be 10. So we need to rewrite each of these fractions. So the LCD is 10. In other words, we have these two fractions. We need to uh, write these denominators where they have a 10 in them. So how can I take uh, this five and make it into a 10? Easy, just multiply it by two, right? So two times five becomes 10. But if I multiply the denominator by two, I'm gonna multiply the numerator by two. So that's gonna be two times two or four. Okay, so four tenths is the same thing as two fifths. But what's great about this fraction, it has our lowest common denominator in it. All right, so here we have one half. How do I make that two into a 10? Just multiply it by five. So I gotta multiply uh, the numerator by five. So I'm gonna get five over 10. So that is what this fraction is equal to. So now at this point, uh, two subtract the fractions when the denominators are the same. We simply uh, add or subtract in the numerator. So this is gonna be four minus five. You gotta be very careful here. I'll make this very explicit. Four minus five is what? Well, that's is the same thing as four plus negative five. So you gotta know something about positive and negative numbers. So four plus negative five is going to be negative one or negative one over 10. Okay, so again, when you're dealing with fractions, you may need to, uh, to kind of do some side work. Try to keep your work off to the side of your solution. In other words, as you're working your solution right here, don't do a bunch of scrap work. Now, in my case, I don't really have that much room because I'm trying to keep the numbers nice and easy to be, uh, be able to read, but uh, you can just take a piece of scrap paper, do your fraction work over there, and then plug in your answer. Try to keep it on the same piece of paper just in case you get the wrong fraction answer, but try it. Basically, try to kind of, you know, keep your solution process going and any other kind of a little um, calculations you need to do. Put them off to the side 
and kind of, you know, put the results of that in here. Now, you know, writing the solutions to equations is um, a habit, you know, of neatness and organization. So neatness, all that stuff counts big time. Okay, that's why you want to use a pencil and not a pen for obvious reasons, because it's easy to erase anything that you uh, wrote incorrectly. Okay, so here, uh, finally, we have the equation 9x is equal to negative 1 tenth. So let's just make sure we understand what the deal is, right? So here we had to figure out with 2 fifths minus 1 half, we did all that work and we determined that was equal to negative 1 tenth. And then on the left-hand side, we had that 9x. So 9x is equal to negative 1 tenth. So we'll, re uh, we'll write it like this, nice and clear. So how do we solve for x? Well, effectively, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 9. But here I have a complex, that would uh, create a complex fraction. So um, alternatively, what you can do, instead of dividing both or thinking um, that you need to divide both sides of the equation by 9, what you can do in its equivalent as um, as dividing both sides of the equation by 9 is multiplying both sides of the equation by 1 ninth. Okay, the objective is to get... Here, let's just kind of go over here. We have 9x. Now, let's say this was just some number like like 90 right here, right? So I would, um, you know, divide both sides of the equation by 9. But my objective over here is to get a 1x. 9 divided by 9 is 1, 1x one or x. Okay, that's my objective. So I'm thinking to myself, all right, I want to get a 1x on the left-hand side. So if I have 9, if I multiply that 9 by 1 9th, I'm going to get uh, this right here is going to be 9 over 9 or 1, okay, or 1x or x. So it's just a little trick that you can use. Uh, again, we're talking about basic algebra here, so uh, just easier to deal with because we have a fraction over here. So uh, we're going to take both sides of the equation and multiply by a positive 1 9th. So we're going to have this negative 10th times a positive 1 9th, again, we're dealing with multiplication of uh, fractions, so we're going to multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So 1 times 1 is 1, 10 times 9 is 90, and this is negative because the negative times positive is negative. And there you go. There is the answer. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, again, you know, if any part of this problem is bothering you, like, ah, I'm a little rusty on fractions, don't quite understand the distributive property. I need some more practice with one or two step equations. Whatever the case is, make your little uh, to do list, right? You know, go like, okay, I got to work on this, this, and this, and this. What you don't want to do is like, I'm totally confused. So maybe let me try another problem and be confused with that problem. And maybe I'll try another problem and be confused with that problem. What you want to do is get good at solving one problem. Okay, start with easier problems for obvious reasons and build yourself up from there, okay? But everything is important in math. Math is cumulative, so you don't um, want to ignore anything you don't understand. You want to correct it the best you can, and hopefully I can help you with that process. Okay, so if this video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.